Hello, good people of YouTube. Sea Lord here. And things are not as they seem, fellas. What am I talking about? Glad you asked. So, this is again dealing with the separation of the Russian client and the main client of the game. Again, if you're not aware, back when Wargaming left Ukraine and Russia, I'm sorry, back when Wargaming left Russia and Belarus, they split up their games into the main clients, which they were still in control of, so the North American, European, and Asiatic servers, and the Russian servers for those that are playing in Russia and Belarus. They gave control of those servers and those clients over to Lesta Studios, which was formerly uh, Wargaming St. Petersburg. It's an office they had bought, branded as Wargaming's own office. Now they just release them to manage you know, water tanks, water warships, and water planes in Russia and Belarus. And the claim was that they are two separate entities now, and they're going to eventually start to diverge. And we originally thought that this was happening thanks in part to this very dev blog that i'm staring at right now that we didn't get god like what two or three months ago and what we're talking about today in the dev blog that i'm staring at is the kitakami changes that were ori originally announced on the russian server again months and months ago this was i believe if not one of the first the first russian dev blog that was released where we didn't have a quick follow-up on our dev blog. Because what was usually happening in the months leading up to this dev blog's release is that either we would get a dev blog, but then the Russian client would get a dev blog, or they would get a dev blog first, and a day or two later we would get a dev blog. So when this Kitakami change dev blog was released on the Russian client, and we didn't get it within, you know, a few days, it was like, oh, dang. There is actual differences now between the Russian client and the main client. But here we are, some months later, with these very same changes. And this is also made more interesting by the fact that the secondary detection change that was originally announced on the Russian dev blog came out with the last update in 12.8. Now your secondaries, if you somehow get your secondaries to be, um, I'm sorry, your detection range to be lower than your secondary range, when your secondaries fire now, your detection will bloom out to your secondary range. That was a change that was originally only released on the Russian dev blog, but now it made it to the game with no other dev blog being released for the main clients. So, very interesting indeed what's going on. So, I would be willing to bet that we will be getting those changes, those slew of buffs to ships that desperately need them, like the California and the Hayate and the Kremlin. And if you're from 2020, you might be thinking, Sealar, the Kremlin needs doesn't need any buffs. Uh, fella, go play it in today's World of Warships. It needs a little bit of love. But anyway, that's not terrible news because, again, <laughs> a lot of the changes that have been coming out on the Russian dev blog, if you haven't seen my videos on them, have been for the most part in my mind pretty positive of course besides the hybrid submarine uh that's a different story but again like th those slew of buffs that were cut that were announced for uh california hayate um was it the yukon you know ships that desperately needed them so what's probably going on is that there's of course some information sharing and some i would imagine updates well not some updates all updates are probably being shared between lesta and uh, whomever whatever office is managing what worships now it makes sense um and like i said in my original what's going on in the russian server video it does appear that truly the only differences now are just that there's some events that the russian servers get that we don't get and there's events that we get that the russians don't get and that after this whole russian ukraine war ends the two will probably merge back into one I doubted that after we, again, we went a few months without these changes being one-to-one, -one, but now they're looking like they're pretty much one-to-one, -one, so that's probably what's going on. Um, as far as, like, business-related stuff, that's completely separate because, like, the sanctions and such, you know, there's no way to really do business with a company that's in Russia right now because of the, uh, again, the, God, I don't know how many sanctions are on Russia right now, but I think they're still just for the sake of, you know, looking at the long-term goals of remerging the games back into one afterwards. 
they're probably going to be one to one for some time, with the exception of some events here and there. But anyway, after that five minute explanation of what's going on, um, and I'll put a time bar down there. So if you skipped here, hi, welcome to the actual dev blog portion of this video. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into these changes that are coming because the, the changes are very interesting with what's coming to Kitakami, the ship that's been in development ha hell for seven years now something like that so let's go ahead and dive on into it link to this dev blog is of course down below if you want to check it out as i read it aloud so they say changes to test ships public test 12.9 based on testing results we're applying changes to kitakami yorktown essex commissar and navarine so japanese cruiser kitakami tier 10 change the parameters of the base torpedoes torpedo speed increased from 82 to 86 knots Torpedo range reduced from 14 to 12 kilometers. Added alternative deep water torpedoes with parameters similar to Asashios. This is, and again, this is part of the changes that, that were announced on the Russian death blog. Uh, maximum damage 20,967. Deal damage to battleships and aircraft carriers, but not cruisers or destroyers. Torpe torpedo speed 67 knots. Detectability 0.9 kilometers. Range of 20 kilometers, and it takes five seconds to switch between the base torpedoes and Asasio's torpedoes. Change torpedo spread angles to fit standard parameters, and the ship HP restoration by repair party has been increased. She now heals 50% of Citadel damage and 60% for the rest of the ship, so quite a big buff there. Maximum speed increase from 32 to 36 knots. All other man maneuverability parameters have been adjusted accordingly. The engine boost has been decreased from 20% to 15%. Short burst smoke generator was replaced with exhaust smoke generator with the following parameters. Exhaust smoke generator. Very interesting. Consumable action time is 40 seconds. You get a 10 second dispersion time. So 50 seconds you just sit there in it. With a cooldown time of 80 seconds and 4 base consumables. They note down here at the bottom. Due to the low combat effectiveness of Kitakami, we decided to make adjustments to her torpedo armament. Since her gameplay heavily relies on torpedoes, we want to provide her with a wider array of options, so we changed her base torpedoes and added alternative ones. To make her less reliant on engine boost, her maximum speed has been increased. Changes to repair party and smoke generator in turn will increase Kitakami's survivability. If you guys aren't aware, this thing was originally a DD, so she didn't have a citadel, but it's still like a small ship, right? So her HP pool isn't massive. So now that she has a citadel, it's super easy to pop her when she shows up. So they added in the repair. Evidently the repair was not enough to compensate for the fact that it's essentially a destroyer with a citadel. And if you really want to know how sad that is, go watch some like pre-alpha footage of World of Warships. Destroyers had citadels and battleships were absolutely wrecking them back in the day and literally one salvo as many um, BB purists say should happen but that's not fun for gameplay balance right you know you slip up you eat one yammy shell up oh, my DD is gone right unless you're the Johnston but anyway so they're now giving her a much improved repair 50% citadel repair is really good and of course 60% for the other portion of the ship is also very good as well so Will Kitakami see the light of day? Um, I don't know. I I'm almost willing to bet that World Warships will get to 10 before we actually get Kitakami. Because this is... Shoot. What? Four months in between? Five months in between the last dev blog mentioning Kitakami and this one? And that's most ships development cycle from them being publicly announced them being released is about four months and that's what we're averaging now for kitakami dev blocks so yeah i'm not holding my breath that this thing's going to come out anytime soon color me surprised if it does all right so the commissar the tier 10 soviet cruiser and this is the hybrid soviet cruiser yes you heard that correctly you're not dreaming so they say Change parameters of the attacked aircraft jet boosters. Action time decreased, but the speed boost increased. So, uh, if you don't know, jet boosters are... I'm assuming they're the boosters that you get on... Well, the same boosters that you get on, like the Soviet CVs. They give you a bit of a, of a boost when you take off. So, you have an increased 
speed for a short distance. The idea is that if you're close to the action, you can just cycle planes faster by using the speed boost to get to the targets faster. You drop your payload, recall the planes, and then rinse, wash, and repeat. So now the time that the boosters are active is decreased, but the speed that you get out of them is increased. To what? I don't know. They don't say. Just that that's what they're messing with. So the distance cross will be about 20% less. I mean, with a cruiser, you're going to be more into the action than with a carrier. So that's probably getting to the point to where it would be. It was being a little bit too abusive, methinks. So, yeah. Okay. Again, we don't know the exact details. Just that it's about a 20% nerf to the distance that they could cover with those boosters being active. Now, the Yorktown and the Essex, these are the upcoming support CVs, and there have been changes made to their patrol fighters. So, the patrol fighters has been increased to standard parameters for their arrival time. Why? I mean, the, the fighters take five ever to get there when you do some of them. So, they just... That was one of the exciting bit about these things, fighters, is that they could get there fast and actually engage the enemy planes, whereas most CV's fighters, you pop them there, they take forever to get there, then they take forever to do anything. So, yeah. Patrol fighters HP has been increased by 30%. Now, these are the planes that cannot spot surface targets, so... Yeah. Shooting them down at this point is only helping your CV, which you should do, but it's not like they're t more tankier, so they're going to be spotting you for longer, because they, they can't spot. Activation time when an enemy aircraft enters their detection radius, they're reduced by 50%. Okay, that's a, okay, that, I see, I see now, VG. So, this means that their activation time, which was already half of what it was for the normal fighters, has now been reduced by 50%. So now it's half of what it was, so it's what, a quarter of the actual activation time which is like 1.5 two seconds now so that's good so they say these changes will even further increase the effectiveness of the patrol fighters compared to patrol fighters of other nations so yeah i mean just make them absolutely drag enemy planes because i want fighters that actually you know protect the ships all right so we have battleship the veteran tier 9 added an option to install the gunfire control system mod 2 upgrade so that's the distance mod so Okay, it's so we maybe they can actually take the distance mod now, or the range mod, I should say. So, guys, let me know what you guys think about these changes in the comments down below. Uh, Kitakami, again, I, I, they're good for her. I don't think it's ever going to see the light of day. I think it's going to be stuck in dev hell again for at least another year or two, in my opinion. Um, Commissar, hybrid cruisers, so, nah, I no likey anyway. Uh, Yorktown and Essex, I'm glad that they're emphasizing the support roles on those CVs and making them better support CVs for the team. Again, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. We're on our way to 75,000 subs, thanks to you guys, and I cannot thank you guys enough for that. Hope you guys have a wonderful Thursday, hope to catch you guys in the next one.